So, this is the Haze Square. It's a portable, on-demand convection vaporizer, powered with a lithium-ion battery. It has USB-C charging. With a computer, you can adjust the temperature presets, along with control the vibration motor and LED lighting. Right here, you'll see me cycle through my temperature presets, which I'll show later, but white is my lowest setting and purple is my highest. The footage we're watching is an uncut native session with two bowls. Before getting into how I feel about the square, I want to cover my technique and how you're supposed to actually use it. The standard way to use a square is to hold the button. It flashes blue, indicating heating. It goes green when it's heated, and then you should draw while still holding the button until the end of the hit. I won't say that doesn't work, but it doesn't seem to work all the time. There have been occasions where I've gotten hits using it exactly how I should, and other times where I've got nothing. This isn't isolated to just me. I've read and discussed with others that seem to also be having this problem. There really hasn't been a concrete fix or even an answer to this issue, but I do think it can be fixed through software or with a minor hardware adjustment. For my technique, I hold the button for about 2-4 to four seconds, but keep repressing the button until my draw is over. Normally I do two preheat pulses, then begin my draw. I do rely on how quickly you can feel the heat rising, and if I find it's rising too much, I'll let go to reduce any chances of combustion. I was having combustion issues for my first few weeks, but haven't had any issues after. I was trying to pinpoint the cause of combustion, and never could. This is also something that people have mentioned having trouble with as well, even at lower temps. It seems that if you're gonna have issues, they'll either be lack of hits or combustion. On a positive note, the flavor on the square is actually pretty clean and neutral. Initially I felt flavor wasn't very great because I could taste the background materials like silicone, but that flavor dissipated over time. This is also a very open vape. The draw is free and unrestricted, which is really comfortable. Hits aren't harsh, and most times you may not realize you've even inhaled vapor until you start exhaling. Airflow does get restricted with use. After about 10 sessions on one chamber, I find myself wanting to clean it. The pods hold about a quarter gram each. Microdosing pods have been mentioned, but it's unclear when we'll see those. Cleaning isn't really as bad as it may seem, but it can be lengthy if you need to do a deep clean. For cleaning, I like to let all my parts from the chamber soak in ISO, then use a Q-tip for scrubbing off any resin. This normally takes me about 3-5 to five minutes, including the couple minutes I let it soak. The mouthpiece and mouthpiece area I just run through with a cotton swab as well.
I think the square's design is actually pretty good, and the fact that nearly every component is replaceable is alleviating. I do feel there are some negatives with the square's exterior, but these are things that can be changed or improved upon. I have seen other squares in pictures and on video, and it seems pretty common to have some of the black coating chipped off. On my square, you can see it really came off around the knob, but other areas have spots of silver where there was coating. Even where the mouthpiece sits in use, I've noticed this issue. The coating isn't the only flaw with its design. Many people have reported the O-rings on the mouthpiece haven't held up well, and one of mine has already broken apart. I fix this by using small silicone tubing in place of that O-ring and trimming it down to fit. What caused this was my mouthpiece getting caught when slotting it back in the unit. If A switches to silicone for this, that probably fix this issue. I also feel the main power button is too soft of a click, or doesn't go in enough, as there are times where I'm not sure if I'm still holding on the button, or may have accidentally let up the pressure. For what it's worth, the temperature adjustment buttons are nice and clicky. Battery life on the square is average, not amazing. I get about 3-4 to four bowls per charge. I do feel pulsing consumes the battery quicker, but I don't think I've ever expected more than 4 bowls on a single charge. The charging time is really where the square makes up for its poor battery. Since the Pro uses USB-C, you get about 30-45 to 45 minute charge time from a lower dead battery. You could also replace the battery if it's ever needed, but it isn't a hot swap situation. You'll need a tool and some time if you've never done it before. I did want to cover a little bit on the software side for the Square app when using Windows. They said they'll release the app on other platforms like Mac, but that hasn't happened yet. So to connect the Square to PC, plug it in with the USB-C to A adapter and power on the device. In the upper right corner, you can see your remaining battery life. Towards the bottom, you can control whether feedback is through the vibration motor or LEDs. Above that is a log for any previous presets you may have transferred. It's a pretty straightforward app. You'll just modify the temperatures and colors through their respective slider, title the preset, and transfer to device. When you transfer to device, it shows confirmation on the unit by cycling through the colors you've chosen for the presets. It's not a bad app, but I've had a few odd situations where it will say transferred and my device doesn't confirm. When loading a previous preset, it saves it as a new one, which clutters the history. The LED colors do not translate very well, and many colors will look the same. You'll also need a computer updated to Windows 10. Earlier versions like 8.1 will not be allowed to download the Square app. The footage we've seen isn't intended as a show of the Square's full potential. I was at low temps for most of it, and I was going for light ABV instead of my standard almost black. I will be doing a couple more square videos, at least one will have a higher temperature focus. There was a lot covered here, but I don't want to flag this as my official review. I still feel the vape is a work in progress. Hayes is still taking orders as pre-orders, and shipping them in phases, so they probably aren't done making changes. I honestly wouldn't consider this vape at all if Hayes didn't already have a good track record for sticking with and improving their products. Currently, I think the Square has good value, being under $200, and it's clear they had to cut some corners to get to this price range. That still is no excuse for a lot of the issues I've had with this vape, but most issues were overcome and the remaining issues can be fixed down the line. Just so it's clear, I wouldn't consider the non-pro model. It's really not a big price upgrade for the pro, and you're trading off some useful features. Overall, as of Phase 3, I'd only suggest the Square to those willing to be a beta tester. Right now, it's lacking consistency, and not only in the heater. Obviously, I didn't cover it all, so if you have any questions or requests, just leave a comment or send me a message. Thank you.